Hi, friends! Hi, friends! Today, we will learn about magnets. So, let's start. You may have seen magnets. Magnets come in a variety of shapes and sizes. No matter what the shape of the magnet is, it always has a north pole and a south pole. This is a horseshoe shaped magnet and it has a north pole and a south pole. This is a cylindrical magnet. This also has a north pole and a south pole. This is a ring magnet. This is a U shaped magnet. This one is called a disc or a circular shaped magnet. And this one is a bar magnet. All types of magnets have a north pole and a south pole. These are examples of refrigerator magnets. They are very popular and come in a variety of sizes and shapes. Hi friends! Today we will learn about magnets. So let's start. You may have seen magnets. Magnets come in a variety of shapes and sizes. No matter what the shape of the magnet is, it always has a north pole and a south pole. This is a horseshoe shaped magnet and it has a north pole and a south pole. This is a cylindrical magnet. This also has a north pole and a south pole. This is a ring magnet. This is a U-shaped magnet. This one is called a disc or a circular shaped magnet. And this one is a bar magnet. All types of magnets have a north pole and a south pole. These are examples of refrigerator magnets. They are very popular and come in a variety of sizes and shapes. We know that the basic characteristics of magnets for which they are used is attraction towards magnetic materials or materials made up of iron, nickel, or cobalt. And this is why magnets stick to the door of the refrigerator because the door is made up of one of these materials. So now we know what are magnets and what are they used for. Now let's learn the science behind the magnets as in why magnets attract things made up of iron, nickel, or cobalt. What is this attraction all about? Magnets have a north pole and a south pole at opposite ends, where opposite ends of magnets attract each other and like ends repel each other. That is, if you take two magnets and bring the north pole of the magnet near the south pole of the other magnet, they will attract each other. And if you take two magnets and bring the north pole of the magnet close to the north pole of the other magnet, they will repel each other, as in you will not be able to join them. And in the opposite case, as in the opposite poles, they will strongly attract each other and stick to each other. So we have learned three things about magnets till now. First, all magnets attract things made up of iron, nickel, and cobalt. Second, all magnets have a north pole and a south pole. Third, opposite poles of magnets attract each other and like poles of magnets repel each other. Now, we will learn other interesting properties about magnets and it is that you will never be able to isolate any pole of a permanent magnet. As in, if you have a magnet, you can never isolate one of the poles of the magnet, even if you cut the magnet into two halves, resulting in pieces that will have two pairs of poles, north pole and south pole. And even if you cut these halves into smaller pieces, each of the individual pieces will have a north pole and a south pole. Now, let's learn about the magnetic field of the magnet. That is the space around the magnet in which a magnetic material or other magnet can experience a magnetic force, as in attraction or repulsion. Here, we need to remember that a magnetic material is an object made up of iron, nickel, or cobalt. When a magnetic material comes in contact with the magnetic field of a magnet, they are attracted towards the magnet. 
They are also attracted towards both of the poles on the magnet, not just one pole. And when a magnet comes in contact with the magnetic field of another magnet, it is either attracted or repelled. As we bring the North Pole near a North Pole, the magnets will repel, and if you bring opposite poles near each other, they will attract. The strength of a magnetic field, that is the force with which it attracts or repels, depends on the magnet that is creating it. Magnets can have varying strength. They can be very weak to strong, and depending on their strength, is the strength of the magnet's magnetic field. We cannot see the magnetic field, but it is the most important property of magnets that enables them to attract or repel magnetic material. Now, let's see an activity that enables us to see the magnetic field. Place a magnet onto a white sheet of paper and then sprinkle very tiny iron fillings around the magnet. The iron fillings will take this type of shape and it is depicting the magnetic field of a permanent magnet. Permanent magnet means a magnet that retains its magnetic field without any external assistance. Now place two permanent magnets with their like poles facing each other and sprinkle some iron fillings. The iron fillings will take this type of shape and this will show the magnetic field when the like poles are repelling each other. Now place two permanent magnets with their opposite poles facing each other and sprinkle iron fillings. Now the iron fillings will take this type of shape and this is the magnetic field when two opposite poles are attracting each other. So this is the way we can visualize or see the magnetic field which is otherwise invisible. So friends, now we know what are magnets, what are magnetic materials, and what is a magnetic field. Now we will learn the internal structure of a magnet or magnetic field. In magnetic materials, small groups of atoms bond together to form domains. These small areas are about one millimeter in size and contains billions of atoms aligned in one direction or all the electrons have the same magnetic orientation and these small domains are called magnets within a material. In a permanent magnet, all domains are aligned in the same direction and in magnetic materials like iron, nickel and cobalt, the domains are not aligned in the same direction but they can be aligned or magnetized to form magnets. So, magnetizing materials means making all the domains align in the same direction, and magnetizing can be done by various methods. A popular method is rubbing a magnetic material against a permanent magnet. For example, here we have a magnetic material, say a needle. All its domains are pointing in different directions, but when you rub it against a magnet, its domains start to orient in the same direction and ultimately after rubbing the magnet many times all domains begin to point in the same direction and the needle turns into a magnet. Now this needle will also attract magnetic materials. Now let's learn what we call permanent magnets. Permanent magnets are actually nothing more than a magnetic material in which all domains stay aligned in the same direction. Iron, nickel, cobalt, and gadolinium are four elements that are always ferromagnetic at room temperature, as in they can be permanently magnetized, so they can be turned into permanent magnets. Now let's learn about a natural permanent magnet. Mineral rock, as in lodestone or magnetite, that naturally exists in nature, possesses an unusual property of attraction towards the metal iron. That is, they naturally attract objects made up of iron, nickel, and cobalt, and gadolinium. Also, it orients itself in a north-south direction, if freely suspended from a string. 
and they are naturally permanent magnets in which domains are always pointing in the same direction and they retain their magnetic field without any external assistance. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. And if you want to see more fun videos, you can hit that subscribe button. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more content. Bye-bye!